I'm currently in Japan and I've never been to a more efficient and automated country ever. And there is also super fast trains everywhere. But I've also heard that Japan is blowing holes in mountains. And to me, that sounds insane, wrecking ecosystems and natural landscapes. That seems like the opposite of clean and efficient. But everything they do here seems to work so well. So I've given them the benefit of the doubt and I've been looking into this. Whoa. And it turns out over the past decade, some of the deepest and longest tunnels ever constructed are happening here in Japan, specifically right here in the Japanese Alps. And one company is spearheading this mega project of blasting holes through mountains at a ridiculous pace, whilst also butting heads with local governments. And I see why these officials are pissed. They want to blow 257 kilometers of tunnel by 2027. And as I thought, this definitely brings on environmental concerns. And it's also set off a bunch of disputes across Japan. But I was also right in thinking that the Japanese company behind this whole blowing holes in mountains thing might be onto something huge. I spent the last week or so traveling across Honshu from Tokyo to Hiroshima. And now I'm back in London in the edit and making this video wasn't easy. Let me kind of show you what I'm currently looking at. I spent all night in this chaos. Full line videos like this, especially on the ground ones, take an unbelievable amount of time and resources to pull off. So I wanna take just one minute of your time to thank the sponsor of this video, Atlas VPN, who helped make this whole thing possible. And I'm gonna tell you how I use a VPN and how you can get the best deal in the market because Atlas VPN is running a huge discount right now. You can get a free year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. By simply clicking the link in the description, you will be supporting us to make more videos and you can take advantage of this deal. I spent a lot of time on trains whilst filming across Japan. So I had a lot of downtime and I was able to get online and fact check interviews that I filmed but logging into all of my accounts whilst traveling sends security protocols into overdrive because they're wondering why am I trying to log in from a foreign country? To get around this, I use Atlas VPN on all of my devices so I can easily connect to an IP address back in London. It's also great when I need to access geo-restricted articles or content like this documentary on Japanese volcanoes on BBC iPlayer. It also blocks all malicious links, trackers, and notifies me if somebody is trying to steal my data. By clicking the link in the description, that helps us to create more. And for a limited time, that link will also give you an 85% discount, which means a free year subscription for $1.99 a month and a 30 day money back guarantee. So thank you Atlas VPN for supporting the work we do. And now back to what the hell Japan is doing to its mountains. And now I'm in the Japanese Alps. And it's been ridiculously easy to move between these regions because Japan knows how crucial it is for people to be able to get around the country so easily. And yet Japan can still seem like a country that is trapped by its geography. Roughly three quarters of the country is covered by a mountain. If you've ever wondered why most of Japan's larger cities, in particular Tokyo, were founded where they are, it's because they're on some of the rare arable plains located on and around the Japanese archipelago. And post-World War II, Japan had to rebuild massively. They were on the losing side of one of the largest wars in history. With Japanese culture being forever impacted by the detonation of the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And we have a video coming out soon about the dark side of Japan's history. I'm currently on an island in Japan that was erased from all maps. The Japanese army didn't want people from the outside to see this place. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to check that one out. But in the 1950s, Japan was being influenced more and more by Western ideas. More and more cars started to be imported or built here in Japan. With road construction ramping up as well, surely people thought that this was the future. The last thing on anyone's minds was trains. Though reliable, the public saw them as slow and outdated. Publicly speaking, many in Japan wanted to follow the footsteps of the US. Across the Pacific, the US was building a major highway that would connect the entire country, ditching these slow, out-of-date old trains. But Japan ended up not taking that route. And as we know today, railways in Japan were about to go through a huge facelift. Thanks in part to the efforts of Shinjai Sogo, president of the Japanese National Railway. He helped push the plan for a high-speed railway that could run at over 200 kilometers. 
to stop the Japanese government from backing out the project because it ended up going massively over budget. Sogo had 80 million US dollars of the project funded by a World Bank loan, assuring that the government would have to commit to the project long term. After several years of work and 200 billion US dollars of investment, the first Shinkansen, the bullet trains, entered into operations in 1964 from Tokyo to Osaka. And before this, it took over eight hours to go between the two cities. With the Shinkansen, this was cut to just three. Now, understanding how the Shinkansen came to be and how it's evolved will help us understand why Japan is blasting holes deep underground today. Now, the original Shinkansen had a number of factors that helped make it successful. First of all, it was the fastest train in the world. Every time I see one blast by, it blows my mind. <laughs> and it kicked off high-speed rail as we know it. Second of all, dedicated right of way. The Shinkansen trains run on tracks that are quite literally bigger than the rest of the Japanese rail network. Slower passenger trains and freight trains can't physically run on the Shinkansen tracks. This makes scheduling much easier. Trains in Japan are so efficient. There is no stress traveling across the country on a Shinkansen. It arrives in Osaka at 10.48 and it gets into Tokyo at like 1.02 p.m. And you can bet on that. Thirdly, they're direct. High-speed trains can go their fastest on straight segments of track. In the 1950s, the Japanese rail line would snake in and out of the many mountains across Japan, adding a lot of time to the trip. For the Shinkansen, tunnels were blown through the mountains and much of the outdoor segments were on elevated viaducts, separating them from ground-based traffic. So these three factors made the Shinkansen super popular. Over the past 60 years, Japanese train technology has gone through numerous updates and the original single line has now expanded into nine lines that covers the entire country. In 2022, that original line from Tokyo to Osaka that was cut down to three hours now takes half an hour less. Now to the Japanese rail network, that is not nearly fast enough. And the best way to make the trains even faster is to, well, get rid of the tracks altogether. What did you just say? What the hell did you just say? What did he say? I'm being deadly serious right here. No tracks at all. Get rid of them, but still a guideway of sorts. It's fast, it's complicated. It's definitely still a Shinkansen, but just not as we know it. Megalevs or magnetic levitating trains are trains that do just that. By using electromagnets, trains can be levitated a few centimeters above the ground and propelled forward at massively fast speeds. Any track used is just for the sake of a guideway, which is why they're often grouped in with monorails. It's not a new technology though. The first maglev was patented in the US in 1902, and maglev test tracks were built across the world throughout the 20th century. But no country took the plunge in building a maglev until 2001, when the Chinese government signed a contract with a German company, TransRapid, to build a line from downtown Shanghai to a nearby airport. As of the modern day, the only country of high-speed maglevs in service is China. But in 2027, that might change. This is the prototype for the Chuo Shinkansen. It's a train being developed and tested by the Central Japan Railway Company, one of the private companies founded when the Japan Rail Network was privatized in the 1980s. In the 90s, this maglev test track was built, and it's since been expanded to be almost 27 miles long. And the Chuo Shinkansen is set to connect Tokyo and Osaka in just over an hour. One hour, that is so fast. And already the test track features the fastest trains in the world. In 2015, a prototype set the world train speed record after going over 600 kilometers per hour. And the test track is even open to the public. Though if you want to ride it, you have to be there on one of the several public days each year and win a lottery to go on board. Sadly, I did not get selected on my trip here. And it's really incredible, especially when you notice how straight and even the track is. To get really nerdy here, the JR Central engineers have made a point to make the new line with as fewer curves as possible. And that's because to an even higher degree than regular bullet trains, the Chuo Shinkansen needs to be as straight as possible. Because of the high speeds, the train needs a minimum curve radius of around 8,000 meters. Which brings us to the whole blowing holes in mountains. The super bullet train can't just weave in and out of mountains. 
so they're going to have to go through them, and in a much larger way than the original Shinkansen line. The JR Central estimates that nearly 90% of the 286-kilometer line will be tunnels, and at the section underneath the Japanese Alps, the track will be built at 1,400 meters below the surface. Okay, so that's deep. So in the most basic sense, they use large machines that bore holes in the rock's surface to be filled with dynamite charges for blasting the rock apart. So far, the construction is on track, for lack of a better word. Originally, it was projected that the original line would open in 2045. However, a recent loan from the Japanese government allowed the JR Central to move up estimates to 2035, with the section from Tokyo to Nagoya being opened in 2027. And in all, it's going to cost over 9 trillion yen. And as I thought, there is a ton of issues that come with constructing ridiculously long tunnels across Japan. Tunnel construction can particularly disrupt local ecosystems, particularly here in the Alps. And not to mention the emissions that will for sure come from the project's construction, especially seeing as it's going to take decades to complete. The company would probably argue that upon completion, this will be offset by the reduced number of cars this rail service will take off the roads. Trains have a huge impact in how people in Japan live their everyday lives. In a survey taken by Japan Guide, over 52% of students and 48% of workers commute daily by train. That's in comparison to only 6% of students and 24% of workers who prefer to drive. The other environmental concerns is about this river here, the Oi River. This flows from the Japanese Alps through Shizuka Prefecture. And it's because of this river that none of the construction of the new line through this prefecture has begun. This segment through Shizuka is only nine kilometers long. However, the municipality is worried about a short section of track that would cross under the river, given the risk of some water being drained during construction or that even some water would leak into the tunnels, lowering the river's water level, causing damage to the farms and ecosystems that rely on it. Local governments have consistently denied to approve JR's central building permits. In 2021, the prefecture even elected a governor whose platform included a commitment to continue opposition to the new rail line's construction. So the bureaucrats in Shinzuku are having none of it and fighting the JR central the entire way. Now, this is uncertain what this will mean for the 2027 deadline. Will a deal be worked out with the local governments or will the JR Central have to divert the route? This has led to an outcry from others in the Japanese government, particularly from the government of the Osaka Prefecture, who worry that a delay in construction will eventually negatively impact the economy. Ultimately, it's a fine line to walk between completing the line quickly and bringing as much economic benefit as possible, whilst also taking into account environmental concerns and constructing the line responsibly, all while taking Japan's wildly mountainous geography into account. Whoa. It's not a sight you see every day, probably the most iconic volcano ever. It is beautiful. Japan has long been the gold standard for super fast trains, and the Chuo Shinkansen looks like it will be a project that will continue to propel Japan forward in the story of the country's modernization if they can navigate its difficult geography and to find solutions for very real environmental concerns from local government before they kill the Chuo Shinkansen before it's even left the station. <laughs>